make no mistake, the Chinese saber rattling toward Taiwan is born out of the same saber rattling they do to us in the United States. And if I may be really blunt, Jeff, Taiwan is indispensable. We have a great program here for you today um, and, a, and a special guest to kick off the discussion. Dr. Roberts, thank you for joining us this morning. My pleasure. Always, always good to be with you, Jeff. Dr. Roberts came to the Heritage Foundation uh, over a year ago promising to make China a priority, and he has followed through on that pledge. I've seen him become personally invested in some of our, our struggles and our, our efforts um, to to make better legislation on China, to make better policy on China, and to push back against the CCP. He also wrote a fantastic commentary last October titled, We're in a new Cold War. It's time our politicians started acting like it. I'd encourage you all to read that. It's one of the better things I've read on China in quite some time. Despite the considerable demands on your schedule, you took a trip to Taiwan and Japan in late February and early March. And we have a few minutes here with you today where I hoped you could share some observations. What compelled you to take that trip at this time? Well, first of, <clears throat> first of all, I was very happy to go. I was looking forward to doing that. But the, in sort of descending order of priorities, and all of these are important reasons to go, the first and most important is because it is in America's vital interest. It is in every individual American's vital interest for us to know Taiwan firsthand as a friend and an ally. And so given the privilege that I have in leading this great institution and working with real experts like you, Jeff, and Michael, who we'll hear from in a minute, it was good to, to go firsthand. The second is looking at it from the perspective of the Taiwanese, it's, it's important that people across the world know the plight of Taiwan. Now, the plight, as you uh, or Derek outlined, is very positive in many respects, economically, socially, culturally. Taiwan's culture is beautiful. Taiwanese people are wonderful and beautiful and warm. And, and I like to say, as an adopted Texan, that Taiwan is the Texas of Asia. That's the highest compliment that an adopted Texan can give. You see my, my, my Texas flag I wear every day until we close the border. But the third thing is, from the standpoint of the United States, there are only three or four countries whom, if they were attacked, would directly affect how our lives go the very next day. At the top of the list, don't forget this, Great Britain. It's unconscionable that they would somehow be attacked, but just imagine a world that if that were to happen, how that would change the United States. Secondly, Israel, that's happened and happening. The third would be Japan. We appreciate that, but not as much as we should. Japan, and, and our Japanese friends know I mean this with, with great sincerity and, and intended as a compliment, we should see Japan as the Great Britain for us of Asia. And fourthly, but although not necessarily fourth on the list, is Taiwan. And for us at Heritage, it's vital to be able to tell that story to American policymakers, who, to their credit, across the political aisle, there are many Democrats who deserve as much credit for recognizing this as Republicans. We have to understand that defending Taiwan, and, and by that I mean in every respect, including economically, diplomatically, is in the vital interest of the United States. Very well said. So I know you had a jam-packed schedule while you were in I remember Taiwan. that. <laughs> in both countries, you met the um, outgoing president, the incoming president. You met a, a range of senior officials, um, defense officials, economic officials. What were some of the bigger takeaways from your meetings? Uh, top of mind for me, as a, as a historian, I just pay attention to culture, to people, what you know, people are saying on, on the sidewalk, in the hotel, and so on is it's just such a cheerful and vibrant place. And that's, that's actually the main reason that I call it the Texas of Asia. It's also a great economic engine, a great place for innovation and entrepreneurialism, which, which are takeaways. But secondly, as it relates to some of the official meetings, if, if you will, members of government, uh, incoming president, the, the outgoing president, the wonderful combination of resolve for the benefit of the Taiwanese people and also the savvy and artfulness of how to navigate that. And 
because at Heritage, we, we do something with the study of not just diplomacy, but that barely scratches the surface of what I'm trying to get at, but it's statecraft. There are a few states in this world, a few countries, that are excellent at statecraft. And Taiwan is one of them. In fact, the United States can learn a lot from them. But then the third thing would be, and this is coming entirely from us, no one in Taiwan would, of course, ask us to say this on their behalf. We, we, we couldn't and wouldn't if, if they had. This is coming from our own analysis. We have to do better in the United States, particularly in the United States Congress, although it's done a pretty good job of delivering on what we promise, whether that be munitions, whether it be diplomatic decisions, and that is both a Republican and Democrat opportunity and challenge. Very well said. Um, since returning from Taiwan, I have heard you use uh, the word indispensable to describe Taiwan and its, and its centrality to U.S. security and economic interests. I don't recall you using that word prior to the trip. Something must have changed your mind. Yeah, it's the value of, of seeing firsthand what the world would be like, what the United States would be like if, God forbid, Taiwan were invaded. And again, just with my parochial hat on as an American, which of course is totally appropriate, people from certain countries need to place as the top priority the, the, the needs of their nation state. If Taiwan were invaded, America would be a poorer place. America would be a less safe place. But also, there would be a chain reaction during the first Cold War, we're in the second one with China, we operated with the thesis of a domino effect, which was real. The Soviet Union initiated that. Make no mistake, the Chinese saber rattling toward Taiwan is born out of the same saber rattling they do to us in the United States. And if I may be really blunt, Jeff, Taiwan is indispensable if something like that scenario were to happen. But it's also indispensable if hopefully that doesn't happen. It causes us in the United States to realize the number one enemy in the world in the history of this great country, the United States, is the Chinese Communist Party. As awful as the Soviet Union was, as awful as Nazi Germany was, as much as we disliked the United Kingdom in the 1770s and 1780s, the Chinese Communist Party is the gravest threat to this country and to free people ever in the history of this country. Taiwan helps us remember that. What's at stake if something happens to them? Mm. Very well said. You also spent some time in, in Tokyo while you were in Asia, and I wonder if you had any observations to share with the group about your time in Japan. Equally wonderful visit. My first yeah. time in Japan as well, and also struck by beautiful culture and wonderful people. And, and although I knew the following, I didn't know it as clearly as I do now. And that is the strength of the Japanese-US alliance is as important as the strength of the US-United Kingdom alliance. And in fact, the growing friendship, the growing formal alliance of those, our three countries, is important not only for the people who live in each of those places, it's extraordinarily important for Taiwan in particular. And so the, the Biden administration deserves some credit for continuing that friendship. We think it should be even more robust and expanded. And whether President Biden wins a second term or President Trump wins a second term, you can count on the Heritage Foundation to be not just advising, but encouraging vehemently the continuation of that. We ought to be, as Americans, extremely grateful for the, the courage that the Japanese have taken in mustering more money for defense, for reasons we understand, a very difficult political situation for them. But they're doing it, and they're happy about it. And I should say, Jeff, that I think I left Tokyo, coming back to, to Virginia, optimistic that we're actually going to avert war because we, at least in the near term, because we in the United States, although it's been very late in the game, have come to realize what's at stake, finally. Well, it's nice to end on an opti optimistic note for once. I'm getting the hook in the back. I think you're needed elsewhere. But Dr. Roberts, thank you for spending some time with us this morning. Real, real pleasure. Thank you all for being here.
The Kevin Roberts Show is brought to you by more than half a million members of the Heritage Foundation. The executive producer is Crystal Kate Bonham. Sound designed by Lauren Evans, Mark Guiney, and Tim Kennedy. For more information and to subscribe, please visit heritage.org.